So hedging. Um, we sort of started talking about a little bit um, about pork bellies where you're just trying to gain some surety about what you're doing. You're not trying to necessarily make money. You're not trying to necessarily lose money. What you're trying to do is just to lock in a price. Um, so a hedge contract is an arrangement with another party to accept those risks. Now that may be somebody else's risk that they're willing to accept um, you know, for whatever reason. They could be a speculator. They could be someone with just an opposite position. Who knows? So a designated derivative is or a designated non-derivative, all that. Um, a designated derivative is something whose fair value or cash flows are expected to offset changes in the fair value or cash flows of the hedged item. So what we should see is, and we'll see this as we go through the demonstration, if we have a situation where we owe US dollars and the Aussie dollar drops, say we owe $100,000 US and the Aussie dollar drops, we're going to have to pay more Australian to pay off that debt. So we're going, to be losing, we're going to be losing money on the underlying situation. So what we want to do is take out a position in a, in a derivative setting where as the Aussie dollar is dropping against the US, we're getting, a, we're getting a gain on the hedge because that means as we're losing in the underlying situation, we're making a profit here and those two should hopefully net out. Um, and as we go through the numbers, we can see that occur. There are three types of hedges that the standard identifies. The first two are the two that we want to look at. So we want to look at cash flow hedges and we want to look at fair value hedges. Now, I do urge you to read this, but the thing I just want to point, point out, and we're going to draw this up because it makes a lot more sense if we have it up on a timeline, is For fair value hedged, you have to have a recognized asset or liability which is moving around. So if you have a foreign currency payable on your books, that is a recognized asset or liability and that will have changes in its fair value as long as the currency fluctuates. So that is something that would be a fair value hedge. And of all of this, the ones that we're most interested in is really around this idea of a highly probable forecast transaction. So in that case, you know that you are going to do something, but you haven't done it yet. So to draw it up, I think it's probably the best way to, I think at least the best way to understand it. So, Okay, this is us right here and now, so we're at time zero. Now for me, I don't know about you guys, I mean holiday, yeah, we, obviously we do get holidays as well, but as holidays are coming up, um, I'm heading off to the US in December, so, which is what I'm look, definitely looking forward to. But as part of that, I'm a little bit concerned because the dollar against the US has been fluctuating a fair bit. We were up above parity going back about six months that dropped to nearly to almost, it either did hit the 80s or it came very close to being in the 80s. It's now come up somewhat. If the US sort out their fiscal situation and deal with this government shutdown which is happening over there, we may drop again. So I am a little bit concerned that we are gonna lose power against the US between now and December when I go away. So let's just assume at some point in the future, I'm gonna go and be in the US. US of A. Now, I am going to buy, well, let's just say I'm going to buy um, some clothes because because certainly when it comes to internet shopping, it's not as Jerry Harvey says, the GST, which is a problem is the fact that things are about double the price here. Um, but you can buy stuff cheaply over there. I'm going to go buy clothes. That's going to be in US dollars that I'm paying for it. Now, that is a highly probable forecast. That's a highly probable future transaction. 
I don't know exactly how much, but I'm definitely going to be doing something. My concern is between now and then, there is going to be a drop in the dollar. If, and I'm not obviously going to do this, but if I was to take out some sort of futures, if I'm going to take out, buy an option uh, to purchase US currency in the future and lock in a price, that situation is a cash flow hedge. Now, we don't know the accounting, how we deal with the accounting for it yet, but that is a cash, that is a classic cash, cash flow hedge. The transaction hasn't happened yet. Now, if, for example, I was not going to pay for these immediately, if I was, whether it, gonna, whether it was going to be, um, I was going to pay on my credit card, or if I was just going to you know, pay them back in a week, whatever it happens to be, This is when I actually have to pay up US dollars. Now I wouldn't clear out that hedge at that point in time. I'd run it through. I'd close out the position when I need to pay the US. So this section up until the transaction occurs, I've got a cash flow hedge. From this point through to when I actually pay the US dollars, I've got a fair value hedge. Because during this period in time, I've got a foreign currency account payable. So there is actually something on my balance sheet which would be fluctuating in terms of the underlying Australian US dollar exchange rates. And that's, again, a risk until I actually clear it out. There's something going on there, but I just need to, I suppose, hedge against it. Um, now, does that... Does that make sense? <laughs> Just okay, well hopefully it does. And if it doesn't, oh, speak now. Um, but the idea is anything before we enter into that transaction is gonna be cash flows. Anything after that is gonna be a fair value hedge. Now, I don't necessarily have to take out, a, use a derivative to get that same sort of surety in terms of locking in a rate. One thing I could do is just right here, in, well, obviously right, not right now because the banks would be closed. I could go down to HSBC, give them $1,000 in Australia and say, I want to buy US dollars right now. And I'd walk out with however much $1,000 buys me and I'd sit on that, put it under my pillow, leave it for two months. I know exactly what I got for that. And it doesn't matter if the Australian dollar collapses, I know exactly what that is. There's no risk for me now. Problem with that, is I don't have just a thousand dollars kicking around that I can do that with, which you know would be nice to have to be able to use here. The second thing is for companies, their cash flow management, they're not going to really be able to do that and just move money into those sort of currencies. They'd probably prefer to take out a smaller position, which is what a Ford or a Futures or an option entails them to do, and then just let that run forward. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So, if we can move to what the cash flow. So again, we'll do this now with numbers and hopefully we can make some sense of the confusion which is going on. 